When integrating with REST APIs, there are a number of authentication and authorization strategies that may be used by the API you're trying to integrate with. Hi, I'm Kevin from BuddyBase, and I want to show you how you can integrate a REST API using a variety of those strategies. Let's dive in. To start, I'll create a new application. I'll start from scratch. I'll call this my REST auth application. I won't include the sample data and I'll click create app. The data source I'm going to use is a REST API based data source and I'll click continue. On this main page, I have the ability to name my source. So I'll call this my REST auth example, which then will be referenceable inside of my application. I can build up a collection of queries. I can add headers globally. I can create an authentication config, which I can use inside of an individual query, and I can use variables to store and reuse values between queries. The first authentication strategy I want to show is using a header. So I have an individual query here that I want to be able to get users. So I can rename this query to get users. And when I query this, I get a unauthorized 401 error. And that's because this API requires me to send an X API key header with the particular key. And the key here is super secret key. So now when I send, I get an example object. I get the schema that we think might be going on here. And I get a preview of all of the, all of the people who we're trying to access. If I try to do it again without the header, again, it's unauthorized. So I've got the option to add a header to an individual query, but back in the configuration menu, I can add a header here, X API key, super secret key, and save. And now when I add the query for my get all users to my endpoint at API version one users, even though there are no headers to find in here, when I send a request, it is being authorized. So I can add the header by root, by query here, or globally from this level here, I can add that. So that's the first method, using a header to send an API key. The second method might be to do the same thing, but this time with a query parameter. So let's see that. Here I am sending my header. Now it has the header. If I send now, I get an unauthorized 401. But if instead I send a query parameter, API key, equals our super secret key and send it that way, it has now been authorized. Now it may be that a particular user has a particular API key. And so we can add a binding and access that. So we could say our API key, we give the default value of our super secret key. And then we can use that binding in our query with double curly braces, API key, and then we send that's going to work in the same way. And just to prove, we'll change the key. And if we send, we're getting unauthorized. But equally, we can use the lightning bolt and we can access the current user and the details from the current user. So we can authenticate sending our API key through a header or through a query parameter. We can do that globally for every request or on an individual request basis. And we can also add authentication options. So here I might add a username and password option and set this to basic auth. And this is asking me for my username and password. So I'm going to set my username to be admin at buddybase.com and I'll set my password and add that. And I'll look at my get all users request now. And if I try to send a request, I'm getting back no authorization header. Okay, so it's just 401, no authorization header. In the auth strategy, I've got access to that username and password auth strategy I had before. Now when I click send, I do get access to the data as well. So I can provide a basic username and password to make it available at that top level. Finally, we can also provide a bearer token. And if you're using SSO, and it's the same SSO that the API you're trying to connect to is using, you can use the OAuth token that has been stored for that current user. If not, we'll have to log into the service, get our access token, and bring it back into the configuration here. 
this is my token. I'll add and save this. So now if I go into my get all users and try to send a request, no authorization header. If I use my bearer token though, I'm able to get the data and this API allows me through. Each API we integrate with will have different specifications for how you need to authenticate who you are and authorize what you're allowed to access. And with some of the strategies that I've shown here today, you'll be able to build up a full library of queries, integrate your APIs into your BuddyBase application. Hope you find this useful and look forward to seeing you around here again soon. Thanks, bye.